Hello and welcome to this video on Simio sample size error analysis. In this video we're going to talk about what we mean by sample size error analysis and how we can perform this type of analysis using the Simio simulation software package. In Simio there are multiple ways of specifying input data. The first and perhaps the most common way of doing this is by putting an expression directly in the object instance properties. So for instance, in the single server model that I have here, I have random arrivals and my inter-arrival times are exponentially distributed with a mean of 0.25 minutes. Similarly, for my server, I have random.triangular 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 minutes for processing times. There are other ways of specifying input data in Simio. For instance, we can use referenced properties. That's when you define the expression in the reference property and then you go back to the object instance and refer to that reference property. Another way of specifying input data is by using tables. So for example, you may have an arrival table that specifies exactly what time entities are created in your model. This is used, for example, when you want to replicate a particular situation that happened in the real system. There are also sequence tables that can be used to not only specify the sequence that parts go through, but also the processing times at each step. You may also use a rate table, especially when you have a non-stationary arrival process. We can also use timers and events. So we can specify an expression in a timer element and then whenever this timer goes off, an event is triggered and something happens in your model. We may also use events uh, that occur in the model. For example, consider a conwip queuing model where you want to maintain a constant amount of work in progress. So every time a part leaves the system, you want to create a new part. So the event of interest here is when an entity leaves the system. And whenever that event happens, you trigger an arrival into your system. So we're not going to go into the details of these items here. What I'm going to do is just go to Simio and show you where some of these can be specified. So I'm going to drag a source object instance here and if you go to its properties you will see that for the arrival mode currently I have inter arrival time and I have the expression directly in my source object properties. Now if I open up this drop down list you'll see that I also have the option to, to use a time varying arrival table that's for modeling non-stationary arrival processes. Or I can have unevent arrivals using an event, and this event may be created by a timer or whenever an event happens in the model. Or I can use an arrival table to specify the exact arrival times. While these methods are discussed in detail in other video modules, in this video, we're going to talk about an alternative way of specifying input data using Simio input parameters. We can specify input parameters under the data tab. So in this particular example, I have defined input parameters for my model. So I have my model selected, I go to the data tab and click on input parameters. And as you can see, we have three different types of input parameters. Distribution, table value, and expression. Let's talk about why we use input parameters in the first place. So there are three main reasons. First of all, if we would like to use the observed real-world data directly in the simulation model. In other words, if we want to sample from the actual data that we have collected, in that case, we need to use input parameters. Also, using input parameters allows us to perform two kinds of analysis. The response sensitivity analysis gives us an estimate of how sensitive 
the outputs of our simulation model are with respect to the different input parameters. On the other hand, the sample size error analysis helps us evaluate the input uncertainty and allocate our data collection resources more wisely to different inputs in our model. In this video, we primarily focus on what sample size error analysis is and how we can perform this type of analysis in Simio. But note that there are two related videos that talk about input parameters in general and how we can specify input parameters in Simio. Also, the same video talks about when and how we can use observed real data directly in our simulation models and some important considerations related to that. And there is another related video that specifically focuses on response sensitivity analysis and how to perform that type of analysis in Simio. So if you haven't watched those videos or if you're not familiar with input parameters and or response sensitivity analysis, please stop this video, watch those videos first, and then come back and continue watching this video. So we're going to use a simple model of an airport security checkpoint to show how we can perform sample size error analysis. In this model, passengers first visit the dock check station where security officers check their boarding pass and identification document, and then they visit either of the two scanning stations. The AIT station, or Advanced Imaging Technology Station, is for regular passengers, while the other scanning station is what we call pre-check here in the U.S. And this is for passengers who have already gone through some background checks. And, and the difference between the two is, is that the pre-check passengers will get to keep their shoes and belts on. There may be some other differences as well. But the net effect is that the pre-check station usually has a shorter line and faster processing time. Now, those regular passengers that go through the AIT either pass and leave the system, or if they fail, not only they need to go through the scanner, uh, scanner again, but they will also need to go through the pat-down station. And this is where an officer performs a body search uh, on these passengers. Now, in this model, all of the routings are uh, implemented using the selection weight property of, of the links. So for instance, 80% of my passengers are regular passengers and 20% are pre-check passengers. Similarly, for the outcome of the AIT station, if, if, if a passenger fails the AIT, that means they, 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 are, they are screened twice, they go through the pat-down station. If a passenger is only uh, screened once, they, f they fail with a probability of 10% or they pass with a probability of 90%. Now, I'm using a combination of conditional and probabilistic routing on these three links. And if you want to learn more about how the routing logic uh, works in this model, um, I would encourage you to watch uh, the, the related video module in, in the entity routing uh, video series. So in this model, I'm also using input parameters to specify the different stochastic processes in my model. So for example, for my passenger inter-arrival time, I'm referring my source object to the inter-arrival times input parameter. Or for the document check station, I'm referring my server object instance to an, an input parameter called doc check processing times. So if I go to the data tab under input parameters, you'll see that I have defined my input parameters here. So for document check processing times, I'm using table value input parameters. And here you can see that um, I'm referring to a table column in a table called doc check observations. So for the document check processing times, I'm directly using observed real world data that I have collected from the real system in my simulation model. So if I go to tables, you'll see that I have my doc check observations table here that contains 
my observations of processing time for 350 passengers that I collected data on. So let's go back to input parameters and talk about the, the other input parameters that we have defined here. So we have uh, another table value input parameter for processing times on, on AIT station. We, we're using a distribution input parameter with a, a, a family type triangular, minimum, minimum of 5, mode of 10, and maximum of 15. And that's for the pat down station. For pre check processing times, I'm using another uh, type of input parameter called expression input parameter. So instead of putting the du expression directly in, in the object instance properties, I, I define the expression here random.triangular123. And finally, for my inter arrival times, I'm again using an expression input parameter with. Uh, an exponential distribution uh, with a mean of 1 over 72. So what do we mean by input uncertainty? So a typical simulation model has a set of inputs, some of which may represent a stochastic process in, in the real world, and also has a set of outputs, which are also random variables. So, so the inputs in our simulations are essentially realizations of empirical or parametric probability distributions that we have estimated, or some other type of stochastic processes. And our outputs are also random variables, and there is uncertainty associated with them. For example, when we look at the average time and system for a simulation model, we can see that uh, the average time and system varies within a range, and we can look at the, uh, the percentiles, the mean, uh, the median, and also the, the confidence interval over, over these estimates. Now, generally, what we do is we assume that these input distributions that we use in our simulation models are exactly right. And therefore, we generally focus on measuring and reducing the sampling error, in other words, the confidence intervals in, in our smart plot right here, by performing more or longer replications. We know as we increase the number of replications or we perform longer runs, we increase the sample size, which shrinks the size of our confidence intervals. The problem is that this assumption is not in general true because we estimate the input distributions based on a limited number of observations from the actual stochastic process in reality. So these input models that we use in our simulation models cannot be exact. And this is regardless of whether or not we use probability distributions. Even if we directly use observed real data in our simulation models, we still have a limited number of observations that we're sampling from. There is no way that we can collect an infinite amount of data. So, there is also some uncertainty associated with our outputs due to somewhat inaccurate estimation of these input distributions or input parameters. And this is what we generally refer to as input uncertainty. So let's talk about what we mean by sample size error analysis. Suppose that we have L mutually independent input processes and that we have a collection of estimated distributions f hat 1 through f hat L for these uh, distributions. So I represent the estimated distributions as a vector called f hat. And suppose f hat is essentially an estimate of the corresponding unknown true real world vector of distributions called FC, the correct distributions that we do not know, but we, we have collected data on. So my correct uh, distribution vector will, will be FC1, FC2, up to FCL. So in other words, in our airport security checkpoint model, we have five 
stochastic processes. The arrival process of passengers, document check, AIT, pre-check, and pat down. So I represent these by f hat 1, f hat 2, up to f hat 5. So if I, if I go to my simulation model and to my input parameters, you can think of this sampled distribution from the actual observed values for document check processing times as my estimated distribution for this particular stochastic process, which, which I call f hat 2. Similarly, for my inter-arrival times, this exponential distribution with a mean of 1 over 72 is essentially my estimated distribution for the actual underlying passenger inter-arrival time in the real system. So my inter-arrival times uh, distribution is what I call f hat 1. Now I'm going to define the output of interest from each replication j of my simulation model by y sub j. So for example if I'm interested in average time and system from each replication of my simulation I'm going to observe one observation of average time and system. And that's what I call y sub j. And also note that my average time and system depends on my choice of input models, my choice of input parameters. And that is why yj is a function of the set of input parameters or input models that I'm using. Now, we replicate the model and we calculate the average and what we obtain is y bar of f hat. So this is essentially the mean average time and system over n replications, for example. And note that this y bar is actually an estimate of the true mean for the average time and system, which is what I represent by g of f hat, which is the expected value of average time and system, for example, given my set of estimated distributions. And we know that as we, as we increase the number of replications to infinity, we observe, uh, a, we obtain a better and more accurate estimate of the true population mean. Now, it can be shown that the relationship between the input models, that is my set of f hat distributions, and my simulation output, which is g of f hat, in terms of a linear function of the mean for my estimated distributions and the variance for my estimated distributions. Essentially, this is a meta model for our simulation model. And it provides a regression approximation of the relationship between the inputs in our model and the output in our model. So basically, this is based on the assumption that the sensitivity of the mean simulation output is largely captured by uh, the mean and variance of the individual uh, distributions that we use for our um, input parameters. And of course, again, this is, this is just an approximation. And of course, we can extend this approximation to higher moments, such as skewness and uh, kurtosis and or the percentiles. Uh, of, 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 of these input distributions. Uh, also note that we, we are not considering the interactions between two or more input variables here. Now, we define the contribution of input parameter L to input uncertainty 
as its marginal contribution to the variance of the expected value of our output of interest. But note that this is just a marginal contribution. In other words, I assume that all my input parameters, except for input parameter L, are estimated correctly. So, so in my expected value for Y, I'm using the correct distribution for all of my input parameters, except input parameter L. Now, deriving the, the expression for, for this variance term is, is out of the scope of this video. I will provide some additional references and resources for you to look at in case you're interested in, in learning more about how this variance term can actually be derived. Uh, for now, we're simply interested in the fact that this contribution term is a function of the sample size that we used to estimate input parameter L. Now, given this, we can define a couple of measures to compare the contribution to input uncertainty for different input parameters in our model. The first measure that we define is what we call the relative contribution of the ELT input model. And is simply defined as the contribution of parameter L over the total contribution for all parameters. In other words, the sum of the individual contribution values for all input, input models. And in fact, Simeo reports this relative contribution uh, as we'll see shortly. The other thing that, we, uh, that we're interested in is what is the benefit of collecting more data on a particular input model? We know that the contribution is, is a function of the sample size, but what is the benefit of collecting more data on that input model? So this is essentially the partial derivative of the variance of my expected output to the sample size used for estimating parameter L. And this is what we call sample size sensitivity. And this is also another measure that Simeo uses to, to find the benefit of collecting additional data or collecting more samples on a particular input model. So let's go to Simeo and talk about how we can perform sample size error analysis. First, the first thing we need to do is define our input parameters, which we've already done here in this model. The next thing we need to do is tell Simeo which of these input parameters we would like to include in sample size error analysis. So here for my doc check uh, processing times, if I want to include this param parameter in, in the sample size error analysis, I simply need to set the include in sample size error analysis property value to true. So by default, for those input parameters on which we can perform the sample size error analysis, this value is set to true. So for my AIT processing times, again, I have true. For my path down processing times, the property value is set to true. Now it turns out that when you use an input parameter of type expression, you cannot include it in the sample size error analysis. That is why this property is grayed out for, for expression input parameters. Now, if we also want to be able to perform the sample size sensitivity analysis, that is those partial derivatives in order to be able to estimate the benefit of collecting additional samples for, for an input parameter, we also need to tell Simeo how much data we used to come up with these estimated distributions for, for our input parameters. In the case of document check and AIT processing times, I'm using table value input parameters. So Simeo can easily refer to, to the observed values and understand what sample size I used for, for these input parameters. 
So in this case, I use 350 observations of processing time for document check and 275 observations for processing time on AIT. So I know the sample sizes for these two input parameters. I can also specify the sample size for input parameters of type distribution. So in this case, I tell Simeo that I used 35 data points on pat down processing times to estimate this triangular distribution. Now, in order to perform the analysis, I need to run uh, an experiment. So I'm going to run my experiment for 50 replications. And when the experiment is complete, I need to go to the input analysis tab and select sample size error. And now you'll see that we don't have any results yet. And this is because unlike response sensitivity analysis, which is automatically done in the background when you, when you run an experiment, as you can see, I have results for that. For sample size error analysis, you need to run additional experiments. So we're just going to use the default parameters here and run the analysis and talk about the results. And then we'll come back and briefly talk about what these parameters are. So as you can see, Simio is running the additional analysis necessary to perform the sample size error analysis. And once this is done, Simio gives me two sets of outputs, contribution to uncertainty, and the, and the other one is benefit of additional samples. So let's talk about each. So for contribution to uncertainty, we see three pieces of information here. The first component is a factor that tells me the output uncertainty is increased by a factor of 2.38 2.38 as a result of the limited number of observations that are used for estimating the input parameters. Now, what does this mean? So let's have a look at this s'more plot right here. And uh, this s'more plot is essentially what we get if we simply go to response results. So this is the exact same s'more plot, the beige box and the percentiles, minimum, maximum, etc. Now, you see, we see one additional component here, which is the blue box, blue confidence interval around our sample mean. And this is what we call the adjusted confidence interval that also considers the uncertainty due to estimating input parameters based on a limited number of observations. So in this case, Simio tells me that I have a lot more uncertainty associated with, with, my, with the output of my simulation model because of the input uncertainty that we do not consider if we simply run the experiments without performing the sample size error analysis. So this wide confidence interval tells me that maybe instead of simply increasing the number of replications or running longer runs, maybe I should try to make my estimates of these input parameters more accurate to, to shrink to shrink the confidence interval over the mean average time and system. The other component that we see in this visualization is the relative contribution by each input parameter. And in this case, I can look at the bar chart and understand that it looks like there is a lot of uncertainty in my output that is associated with estimating the path down processing time based on a, a limited number of observations. Remember, we only used 35 observations of the real world process to estimate the triangular distribution for, for this input parameter. So maybe if I want to collect more data to shrink this blue confidence interval further, maybe I should focus more on, on path down station and collect more observations from that stochastic process. So I can also go to the benefit of additional samples tab. And as we can see, because we used a very small sample size for estimating path down processing times, we see that based on this analysis, the benefit of collecting additional data on path down processing times is significantly 
more than the benefit of collecting additional data on the other two input parameters that I've included in my sample size error analysis. So bottom line, the sample size error analysis can guide my data collection efforts and help me allocate my data collection resources to the different input parameters in my model more effectively. So the algorithm that Simio uses to, to compute these relative contributions or the factor by which your original confidence interval increases due to input uncertainty is based on an approach generally referred to as bootstrapping. While the details of, of bootstrapping and this specific algorithm is out of the scope of this video, I want you to know that since bootstrapping is essentially based on Monte Carlo simulation and resampling, in general, the more bootstrapping you perform, the more accurate your results are in a statistical sense. Now, this particular algorithm has two parameters. The first one is the number of bootstraps, which is automatically determined by Simio. The second one is the number of replications per each bootstrap. Again, we're not going to talk about these in detail. Suffice to say that the more bootstrapping that you do, the more statistically accurate your estimates of these relative contributions or the factor are. So in this video, we talked about what we mean by sample size error analysis, what we mean by input uncertainty and, a, and the contribution of an input parameter to input uncertainty. And we also talked about how we can perform this type of analysis in Simio.